my name is Benji Claus and welcome to Dice vs Cards. It's that time of year again ladies and gentlemen and what sort of content creator would I be without furnishing you with the top 10 list of Christmas gift ideas for either yourself or for friends and family. Like last year's videos which are still in the category of the valid we'll be breaking down these lists into four categories. Lightweight which we published last week medium weight which we're covering today and heavyweight games but for a brucey bonus we're also floating you some stocking filler ideas for when there's that little bit of room left in the budget all of the games in this here list will be reliable ideas for those that have done more than just dip their toes into the board game space but haven't necessarily gone head first into deep waters What's appealing about these games is they bridge the gap between light and heavy, so they are in many ways the sweet spot of ball gaming. There are also those that lean towards one or the other extreme, so we're going to start with the breezy and edge towards the meaty. With all that being said, let's count from 1 to 10. Number 1. Era Medieval Age Shows you how to mix roll and write games with Lego combining to make the imaginatively titled Roll and Build genre. The dice you roll represent the different classes of medieval society, building a city of three-dimensional shapes on your player board. These shapes represent keeps and farms and other city buildings you'd expect from this time and place. But you'll also need to gain material resources from your dice all of which are kept track of using pegs inserted into the board just like your cities. But you'll also need to gather the means to keep the city's inhabitants fed and add walls to your city that ramp your points and give you added security from attack. All in all this provides a nice visual and strategic game of dice chucking and building blocks. Number 2 The Isle of Cats may look a little bit bizarre but trust me when I say there's more than enough in play to set this polyomino based tile placement game apart. Each player's board represents a ship and its different rooms and holds, but there's more to this than just picking tiles and placing them. There's a round of drafting that comes first and it will see you picking objective scoring points, the means to rescue cats that you'll then place on the board and the ability to stow treasure. All the while picking cards that have passive ongoing effects and immediate ones. What this results in is a tile placement game with a few bells and whistles wrapped around it. Now the theme might be a little bit off kilter, but the overall package is a recipient of a definite thumbs up. Number 3. Heroes of Terranoth is a reskin of Warhammer Quest the Adventure Car Game. One of my favourites and making this an easy recommend. At its heart it's an action selection and dice rolling game where you're pitted in different scenarios against the myriad of enemies with the aim being to fully explore your location and meet the win conditions. But it's the different actions you can take only once at a time before needing to rest up that gives this game its strategic decision making goodness. With each class specialising to varying degrees in each of the actions available the way you work as a team will mean the difference between success and failure. This delivers on that core mechanism almost perfectly and the theme is a great fit to boot. Number 4 Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth is an apt based adventure crawl set in Tolkien's titular universe. Whilst its cousins Imperial Assault and Descent both had apps retrofitted into their mechanisms, this one was built from the ground up. All the narrative and mechanical legwork is carried out by the app, but for your part you'll be using only cards to carry out actions and then drawing said cards from your multifunctional deck to discover the number of successes you've achieved either in exploration or combat. The app does the rest for you and will track monsters health and the progress of the story. For fans of this IP and apps in general that do a good job of facilitating the action as opposed to taking over, this is sure to be a hit for you. Number 5. The Taverns of Typhonthal sees you as the landlord of a pub or a bar or whatever you want to call it. But in ball game terms you'll be deck building by gaining workers that improve the infrastructure of your establishment 
and attracting wealthy guests that will ultimately net you resources, which make it a whole lot easier to hike up your points tally. It's this wonderful mix and match deck that you evolve over the course of the game that will see you drawing either many or few cards and placing them in their respective part of the tavern before everybody starts drafting dice that will then enable you to activate the cards that have equal facings to the dice you chose. Overall this is a welcoming game that brings a tight set of mechanics and plenty of joy to the table. Number 6 Imperial Settlers Empires of the North is an asymmetrical card game pitting you as the leader of one of the six different northern factions, each of which come with two unique decks to choose from. As a predominantly hand management game, Empires will see you building a tableau that you'll aim to build some super synergy into that allows you to then gather resources and maximise your points from said gathering. In order to help you in this task, you can take a number of separate actions, like constructing buildings for free, drawing cards, and even sailing to a nearby island to pillage resources and conquer cards that get added back to your tableau. It's a simple premise in many ways, but it's so well executed, and as a cartoony theme to boot, it's hard to say no to its charms. Number 7 Western Legends is, as succinctly as I can put it, a Wild West sandbox game in a cardboard box. Like most folk back then, you had the choice to be law-abiding citizens or outlaws. And this is a game that gives you the freedom and flexibility to do whatsoever as you please. The board represents an area of land marked out by grids, with bandits, mines and a couple of towns in it. And that's the platform for you to set up shop in the saloon and play a scaled down hand of poker or rob the bank, do some prospecting, visit the general store, etc, etc. All the while pursuant to the goal of gaining a number of legendary points dependent on the game length. This is a game all about sub games and the interactions you have with other players. So this is just straight up open and wholesome fun. Number 8. Everdell is a cutesy little city builder that sees you acting as a number of woodland species looking to gain resources and construct buildings in order to gain the most points. A worker placement game that sees you starting with a meagre amount of workers, meaning the first couple of turns are a bit of a slow grow, but see you trying to rustle up the resources you need to add townsfolk and buildings to your tableau played from either your hand or the communal marketplace. You can also cheat these cards in based on what you've already added and there's just enough going on here that's a bit different for a worker placement game and this alongside the wonderful production value ensures this will be a real attention grabber. Number 9 Heroes of Land, Air and Sea is a 4x game that sees you exploring, expanding, exploiting and exterminating to your heart's content. Picking up one of the four factions available, you start off on your own little island to give you a moment's peace and quiet, but then the action quickly hots up as you see what's what in the local area, before heading off by air or sea to other lands, all the while building up your settlements and means to gain resources, before choosing to largely keep to yourself or take the battle to your opponents. It's the player that does that the most efficiently that takes home the spoils. Now this is certainly one of the longer games on the list and is edging towards heavyweight, but it's accessible and straightforward enough to warrant its inclusion here. Number 10, Nemesis is a survival horror semi-cooperative game that sees you stranded on a spaceship that may or may not have bloodthirsty aliens on board. And its core is a hand management game that sees you discarding cards to pay for the action on other cards in your hand. Be it moving from room to room, enabling the special actions found in most of the rooms on the board, or engaging in combat with the anywhere from small to large big nasty xenomorphs. This here is another slightly heavier game that's dripping in theme and has a very welcome immersion to its gameplay. 
the fact that you never quite know who's got their own agenda that's completely opposed to yours just racks up the tension to 10. This provides just a wonderful, wonderful time at the table. So there you have it, our top 10 Christmas gift ideas in the category of medium weight games. We hope you found something that's raised your eyebrows and twitched your fingers to the add to cart button. Stay tuned next week for another set of recommends, this time of the heavyweight variety. However, that's it from me. I'll see you next time.